Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on the new videos. Today, we're going to discuss about Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is one of the type of inflammatory bowel disease and uh, inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic condition resulting from inappropriate mucosal immune activation. There are the this disorder contain this disease has mainly two disorders. One is ulcerative colitis and the other one is Crohn's disease. Now, ulcerative colitis is limited to rectum and colon, whereas Crohn's disease not so much limited. Crohn's disease show skip lesions. That is, if the disease is present in, let's say, in the cecum, then the disease might be might not be present in the uh, transverse colon or the descending colon, but might be present in the sigmoid colon, thus showing the skip lesions in the uh, morphology and uh, it's also transmural the Crohn's disease is transmural whereas ulcerative colitis affects only mucosa and submucosa and this uh, Crohn's disease is present in teens and in early 20s but being slightly more common in females in either of the conditions hygiene hypothesis now this hypothesis suggests that the increasing incidence is related to improved food storage conditions decreased food contamination and changes in gut microbiome composition. Apparently, this results in inadequate development of regulatory processes that limit mucosal immune response. This in turn allows some mucosa associated microbial organisms, which is the normal flora of the GIT, to trigger persistent and chronic inflammation in susceptible hosts. As you can see in the figure, Crohn disease showing skip lesions and uh, ulcerative colitis showing the continuous colonic involvement being in the rectum, beginning in the rectum, and uh, Crohn disease showing the transmural inflammation, and uh, whereas uh, ulcerative colitis uh, affects only mucosa and submucosal layers of the GIT. Pathogenesis. Although precise causes are not yet defined, but most investigators believe that inflammatory bowel disease or uh, Crohn's disease or uh, ulcerative colitis results from the combined effects of these four factors. These four factors being genetics, mucosal immune response, epithelial defects and microbiota. The very first of those factors is genetics. Risk of disease is increased if there is an infected family member. Now these genetic factors may also contribute to the phenotypic expression of the disease because twins who have been affected by Crohn's disease tend to develop the Crohn's disease even, uh, at the same time or after a few years from one another but they develop the disease in the similar regions of the GIT. There are about 160 I IBD inflammatory bowel disease associated genes. Now several of these IBD genes uh, associated genes overlap with those of the genes involved in the response to mycobacteria. Now this supports the idea that host microbial interactions are critical to the pathogenesis of IBD and may explain some overlap in the histopathology of Crohn's disease and the microbacterial, mycobacterial infections. One of the genes most strongly associated with Crohn's disease is NOT2 which is nucleotide oligomer oligomerization binding domain 2 which encodes an intracellular protein that binds to bacterial peptidoglycans and activates signaling events including the nf kappa b pathway now this doesn't mean that not to alone is responsible for crohn's disease less than 10 percent of the individuals with risk associated not to polymorphisms develop disease in addition to not to Two Crohn disease related genes of particular interest are ATG16L1 called as autophagy related 16 like and IRGM immunity related GTPase M. Both are part of autophagy pathways that are critical for cellular response to intracellular bacteria. Nod 2 ATG16L1 and IRGM are expressed in multiple cell types 
and their precise role in the pathogenesis of Crohn's disease have not yet been defined. And however, all of these play an important role in uh, uh, recognition and response to intracellular pathogens, supporting the hypothesis that inappropriate immune reactions to luminal bacteria are an important component of inflammatory bowel disease pathogenesis. Immune responses T helper cells are activated in Crohn's disease and interleukin-23 is involved in the development of T helper 17 T cells. Now this certain polymorphisms of the interleukin-23 receptor confer marked reduction in the risk of both Crohn disease as well as ulcerative colitis. Autosomal recessive mutations of interleukin-10 and interleukin-10 receptors are linked to severe early onset of inflammatory bowel disease. Now this it's clear that uh, deranged mucosal immune activation and defective immunoregulation contribute to the development of ulcerative colitis and Crohn disease. Epithelial defects. Defects in the intestinal epithelial tight junction barrier functions are present in the Crohn disease patients and a subset of their healthy first degree relatives. Barrier dysfunction is associated with specific disease associated NOD2 polymorphisms. Experimental models demonstrate that barrier functions dysfunctions can activate innate and adaptive mucosal immunity and sensitize subjects to diseases. Microbiota. There are about 1 trillion organisms per milliliter of colon. That's more that there, that there are more organisms in your body than there are human cells. The presence of antibodies against the bacterial protein flagellin are most common in Crohn disease patients who have disease associated NOD2 variants, stricture formation, perforation and a small bowel move involvement. This antibodies to the flagellin protein are absent or very uncommon in uh, ulcerative colitis. One model that puts all these factors together and uh, gives suggests a cycle by which trans epithelial flux of luminal bacterial components activate innate and adaptive immune responses. A genetically susceptible host, the subsequent release of a TNF or tumor necrosis factor and other immune mediated signals direct epithelial epithelium to increase tight junction permeability which cause further increase in the flux of luminal material. These events may establish a self amplifying cycle that gives rise to maladaptive and injurious immune response. Morphology. Although Crohn's disease may present anywhere in the GIT, the common sites involved in the GIT are the terminal ileum, ileocecal valve and cecum. The Crohn's disease is limited to the small intestine up to 40% of the cases and in the colon up to 30% of the cases. Skip lesions is the characteristic feature of Crohn's disease and uh, it's not found in uh, ulcerative colitis. Strictures are common in Crohn's disease and earliest lesions or after ulcers may progress and multiple lesions may collease into elongated and serpentine ulcers. This edema and loss of the normal mucosal texture are common in uh, and uh, you know Crohn's disease. Sparing of the interspersed mucosa a result of the patchy distribution of Crohn's disease results in a coarsely textured cobblestone appearance in which the diseased tissue is depressed below the level of normal mucosa. The intestinal wall is thickened and rubbery as a consequence of transmural edema, inflammation, submucosal fibrosis and hypertrophy of the muscularis propria, all of which contribute to structure formation. As you can see here in the figure, on the, the bigger picture, the structure formation is grossly visible and in the upper right corner, the small picture shows the fissures. Fissures frequently develop between mucosal folds and may extend deeply to become fistula tracts or sites of perforation. The picture below the fissure, fissures picture shows the cobblestone appearance or uh, the appearance of a normal mucosa layer raised and the diseased mucosa layer depressed. That's cobblestone appearance. The microscopic features of active Crohn's disease include abundant neutrophils that damage crypt epithelium leading to crypt abscesses. Clusters of neutrophils within a crypt are referred to as crypt abscesses and are often associated with crypt destructions. 
Repeated cycles of crypt destruction and regeneration lead to distortion of mucosal architecture and the normally straight and parallel crypts take on bizarre branching shapes and unusual orientations to one another. As you can see in the histologic figure, the crypts uh, are distorted and uh, the mucosal architecture have been destroyed leading to their unusual orientations. Non-cascating granuloma, a hallmark of Crohn disease, are found in approximately 35% of the cases and may occur in areas of active diseases or uninvolved regions in any layer of the intestinal wall. As you can see in the figure, arrows show the granulomas present in the intestinal wall and the cutaneous granuloma form nodules which are referred to as metastatic Crohn disease. Although this doesn't mean that there is a cancer involvement in it, but the cutaneous granuloma form the nodules which look like metastasis of Crohn's disease. Paneth cell metaplasia may also occur in the left colon where paneth cells are normally absent. These architectural and metaplastic changes may persist even when active inflammation has been resolved. Clinical features Disease begins with intermittent attacks of relatively mild diarrhea, fever and abdominal pain. Now, periods of this active disease are typically interrupted by asymptomatic periods that last for weeks to many months. Disease reactivation after this uh, asymptomatic periods is triggered by external factors like physical or emotional stress, specific dietary items and cigarette smoking. And cigarette smoking being the most strong or the most major important risk factor for the reactivation. Unfortunately, smoking cessation does not result in disease remission. Fibrosing structures, particularly of the terminal ileum, require surgical resection. Even though after the surgical resection, the 40% of the patients might need to get another resection within 10 years, this anti-TNF antibodies have revolutionized treatment of Crohn's disease. Fistula development between the loops or of bowel and may also involve the urinary bladder, vagina and abdominal or perianal skin. Extra intestinal manifestations include uveitis, migratory polyarthritis, sacroiliitis, ankylosing spondylitis, erythema nodosum, and clubbing of fingertips. Risk of colonal adenocarcinoma is increased in patients with long standing inflammatory bowel disease. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, bye bye.